Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. 2022 was a great year for Drag Race and there were more seasons than ever before with lots of juicy drama to talk about. So because we're coming to the end of 2022, I thought I'd put together a compilation of my 5 favourite Drag Race videos from my channel from across the year. I hope you enjoy and Happy New Year everyone! Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So I have lots of All Star 7 gossip to talk about today. I'll be talking about the rumour that Raja screamed at Michelle Visage, why Raja effed up the lip sync against Jinx, what Raja thought about Violet Chachki booting her looks, why Violet Chachki got fashion photo review pulled from YouTube and the drama involving Derek Berry, India Farah plus others. So let's get started! Please note that a spoiler alert is in place for this video. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. Raja screamed at Michelle Visage. So there was a juicy bit of tea this week involving Raja on All Star 7 that was spilled by Drag Race alum Willem. In an interview from last week, Willem and Alaska, who are co-hosts of the podcast Race Chaser, were asked what they thought of All Star 7. Willem then spilled some tea involving Raja. Willem said, quote, There is one showdown with Raja that I don't know if it's going to make the air, but she gives it to someone who needed it given to for a long time, and this B gets it. Alaska then asked Willem who they were referring to, and Willem said that it was Michelle Visage that Raja apparently screamed at. Willem then went on to say, quote, She screams at her. She is backstage yelling, fire her, and she's not on my level because she tried to read her. Certain people judge us and they have no qualifications to judge us apart from being friends with the host or going to Vogue balls in the 80s and saying Madonna stole her act. Raja effed up the lip sync against Jinx. You may remember that in episode 5 of All Star 7, the queens had to do draguation speeches and Raja and Jinx were the top two. Many people commented afterwards that Raja's performance in the lip sync was very lacklustre and wondered what happened. Well, in an interview, Raja addressed this and explained why she quote, effed up the lip sync. Raja said, I know I completely effed that up. I remember that. Well, here's my logic to that. I had for every week I knew that I was doing a good job and all the judges had been complimenting me so much on it. What people don't realise as viewers is that every episode really is every other day. So every other day you had to learn a new lyric just in case you were at the top and you had to lip sync. So at that point, after four episodes in, I was exhausted. Raja also said... I know I'm going to do a great job, but once again, they're probably going to overlook me and ignore me. So maybe I'll lip sync, but most likely not. That was what was happening in my head. So it was a little bit of a shock to me when it came down to it, because when I realised that I had won the challenge, I was like, oh, F, that means I have to lip sync. And I did not know this song. I had not made any preparations. It was very lyric-y. And so I was like, OK, well, let me just do this not knowing the lyrics and I'll do what I do in every club. Let the audience just enjoy how gorgeous I was. Raja also went on to say, for me, I was content with the fact that I had the star and I could care less about the 10 grand of winning. I was just like, give me the star. I don't care about anything else. I'd waited too long and the star was finally mine. And sometimes that happens. We're not perfect, we're not superheroes. So it was the best that I could do at that moment. All I wanted was a star. And the whole time we were lip syncing against each other, I just kept thinking, oh my god, I finally got a star. Oh wait, we're also lip syncing. Raja on Violet's boot. You may remember that a few weeks ago, the internet blew up after Violet Chachki, who is one of the new co-hosts of Fashion Photo Review, along with Got Mick, got a lot of backlash online after she booted several of Raja's outfits. In fact, the backlash was so bad that Viola actually got the production company to pull the episodes from YouTube. I'll explain the full story of that later in the video, so stick around for that. But first, 
Raju was asked about Violet booting her looks during an interview and Raja seemed to have a good sense of humour about it. Raja said, I loved every minute of it, I loved it. You're getting an entire fandom on my side, question mark. Absolutely. I loved having a big spoonful of my own medicine being shoved down my throat. Raven and I pretty much created Fashion Photo Review. The terms toot and boot were something that we made up and now it's global. It's household. I was glad to be on the other end of it because I spent eight years doing Fashion Photo Review as a way to keep my visibility and relevance and now here I am on the other end of it. It was my great honour and pleasure to get booted by both Violet and Got Mick. If I was going to take it from anybody else, I probably wouldn't. I realise they're a bunch of silly little a-holes anyway, and so am I. And then, Raja was asked if she had contacted Violet or Got Mick about it, and Raja said she, quote, passive-aggressively tagged Got Mick in one of my posts on Violet's pictures, like, you little bleep bleep talking about me. I did text Cade, Got Mick, a personal thank you. I was like... Please let Violet know I'm totally loving what you guys are doing. Whatever you're doing, keep it going because everyone is rooting for me right now and I couldn't be more appreciative. Violet pulling fashion photo review from YouTube. As I mentioned earlier, you may remember that a few weeks ago on fashion photo review, Violet Chachki booted two of Raj's looks from All Stars 7. Gottmik also booted one of the outfits, but it was Violet who got most of the backlash. Violet and Gottmik even leaned into the drama a bit and posted a video where they were pointing at a poster of the All Stars 7 cast on it and they went down the line and said boot boot boot. Fashion Photo Review was also taken off YouTube and was made exclusive to WOW Presents Plus and many people were wondering why. It emerged last week that apparently Violet herself asked the production company to take it down off YouTube and Violet even threatened to quit drag if they didn't. During a viewing party, Drag Race alum Naysha Lopez and co-host Batty Davis explained that Violet had been at the viewing party the week before and explained the whole story. Naysha said, quote, We had Violet here and she said no, she called them and said, Pull them, referring to the episodes, that's it. Batty Davis added that all of this happened while Violet was at the viewing party the week before. Naysha went on and said, quote, Think about it. You asked for your opinion, she was honest about it and she got a bunch of bleep for it. Naysha added that Violet said she was angry and told the production company to pull the episodes off YouTube. Apparently the production company tried to say that it was okay and that Violet had been doing a good job, but then Batty added that Violet said, quote, I will not. I'm to the point where I will quit drag. Batty and Naysha then went on to talk about cancel culture and how mean Drag Race fans can be for no reason. Derek Berry vs India Farah In other All Star 7 related news, there was some drama this week involving Derek Berry, who appeared on this week's episode of The Pit Stop with Bob the Drag Queen, where they were discussing the latest episode of All Star 7. On the pit stop, Bob mentioned fellow drag race queen India Farah to Derek and talked about the infamous that's why Derek don't like you moment from Alexis Mateo on All Stars 5. For those of you who haven't watched All Stars 5, Derek and India made it clear while they were both on All Stars 5 that they do not get on and they have a long history of feuds between them. And at one point on All Stars 5, fellow competitor Alexis Mateo accused India of lying and then voted for India to go home that week and said, quote, you're a liar and that's why Derek don't like you, which became a meme. Anyway, on the pit stop for All Stars 7, Derek made a few jabs about India making it clear that they still do not get on. Well, the drama then spilled over to social media, and it appears as though India Farah has since deleted her entire Twitter account. Shortly after the pit stop aired, India Farah tweeted saying, quote, So very thankful I work for myself and that I'm not a, quote, slave for someone paying pennies while other cast members make ten times the amount of pay you are. Go enjoy the rest of those shows you've got this year. You're going to need them and every one of them. And this was seemingly in response to Derek's comments on the pit stop. Derek then tweeted, seemingly in response to this, by saying, quote, Busy on tour this weekend, can't wait to get back to Vegas. So thankful I have shows for the rest of the year to look forward to, dot dot dot. Hashtag Drag Race Live. And Derek also tweeted saying, quote, She thinks I can't keep her name out my mouth, yet she can't keep plaque out of hers. 
And then All Star 7 contestant Shea Coule got involved and replied to India's original tweet saying, quote, The choice to say you're not a slave on Juneteenth is truly camp. You've outdone yourself, sis. Dot, dot, dot. India responded by saying, quote, Oh, here we go. I forgot I can't tweet anything without it being racist or taken offensively. Thank you for reminding me why I don't play the games y'all choose to play. Not all of us are, quote, perfect. And Shay also replied to India's tweet, which she had deleted by that point, saying, quote, You want to talk the talk, but you deleted it very quickly, didn't you? India then tweeted saying, quote, Yes, because just like on All Stars 5, you turned something into something it was not. Very useless. Hashtag I never said alliance. And then Shea responded by saying, quote, You literally lied and got caught up in your shenanigans, but blame me for your downfall. Good luck with all your bookings. I hear Shark Week is really going to be amazing this year. Several other drag race queens also weighed in, such as Farrah Moan, who said that India had blocked her. And Alexis Mateo also posted a gif of herself and Shay laughing from All Stars 5 in response to Farrah Moan's tweet. As I said, it appears that India has now deleted her entire Twitter account, so I can't confirm the exact timelines, but all of this information is based on screenshots of the tweets. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race Gossip, Secrets and Drama. Today we have lots of juicy Drag Race Gossip to talk about, so this video is going to be split into two parts. This is part one and we're going to be talking about the Vivian fainting backstage on All Stars 7, Kerry Colby's Twitter controversy and marijuana use on the set of Drag Race. All that in today's video, so stick around and make sure you also check out part two, link in the description. The Vivian Fainted So, for those of you keeping up with All Stars 7, you'll know that last week's category on the runway was Nitty Nitty Bang Bang, which meant that the queens had to wear outfits that involved some kind of knitwear. The Vivian wore a floor-length white knitted gown made of wool that she said was, quote, the heaviest garment I've ever worn. The Vivian also said on the runway that she was, quote, sweating my minge off. However, it turns out that the gown may have been so hot that it caused the Vivian to faint backstage. During a viewing party last week, fellow All Star 7 contestant Evie Oddly was talking about the Vivian's outfit and said, quote, She actually passed out for half a second too. They had to take her out of it for some of the critiques because it was so heavy and so hot. Obviously, we don't know if Evie was exaggerating a bit and whether the Vivian really did faint, but we can clearly tell the Vivian was overheating. For example, in Untucked, when the queens returned to the workroom after the judges' critiques, they cut to a shot of the Vivian taking off her garment seconds after walking off stage. She even had to be helped out of the garment by a member of production. When the queens returned to the workroom, the Vivian can be seen fanning herself and she said, quote, I am dying so I'm cooling down with a cocktail, whose idea was a knitted runway in the middle of Los Angeles. Later, the Vivian explains, quote, that dress weighed 23 pounds, if not more. Marijuana on set. Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. So the use of marijuana has been spoken about quite a lot on Drag Race, with many of the queens being avid marijuana users, one of the most notable examples being Laganja Estranja from season 6. For those of you that don't know, recreational marijuana is legal in some states in the US and one of those states is California, which is where Drag Race is filmed. The topic of marijuana use while on the set of Drag Race came up on Twitter recently when a Twitter user asked the question, quote, Question for the Rue Girls, is Drag Race a no marijuana workspace? And the Twitter user also tagged Shea Coulee, Monet Exchange and Jada Essence Hall in the tweet. The first person to reply was actually Eve6000 who appeared on Canada's Drag Race Season 2. Eve said, quote, For Canada, you were allowed, but you had to provide your own weed and you could only do it after filming at the hotel. After that, Shea Coulee responded to the tweet and said, quote, Technically no, but that didn't stop us. Then Monet Exchange responded to Shea's tweet saying, quote, B, next episode, the rehearsal. It's assumed Monet is referring to this week's episode which has yet to air, but in last week's episode's preview, it was mentioned that the queens would have to create their own social media dance challenge. 
So it's assumed that Monet is implying that they were stoned during the rehearsal for this week's episode. Then another Twitter user posted a short video clip from episode 6 of All Stars 7 during the rehearsals for the Total Request Live Challenge, where Monet has an unusual expression on her face with the caption, quote, the rehearsals deaf be the most obvious. Jada Essence Hall also got involved after someone responded to her tweet with a photo of a man with a glazed expression in his eyes. Jada replied saying, quote, my eyes just naturally float over and around thing I'm trying to focus on. Make sure you check out my Patreon where I offer exclusive member benefits such as shoutouts in my videos, chat community and sending one-to-one messages with me and also exclusive content. Check out patreon.com slash drag tea served or use the link in the bio to sign up. I hope to see you all there and welcome you to the drag tea served family. Kerry Colby's Twitter controversy. Season 14 contestant Kerry Colby had a little bit of controversy this week on Twitter after she tweeted what was meant as a joke about Roe vs Wade. Just as background for those of you that don't know, Roe vs Wade was a landmark decision of the US Supreme Court which ruled that the Constitution of the United States generally protects the liberty to choose to have an abortion. However, recently the Supreme Court overruled Roe vs Wade, which caused widespread uproar as it allows individual states to ban abortion and this sparked a huge amount of controversy. Many celebrities, including Drag Race contestants, commented on this on social media, including Kerry Colby, who is openly trans. Kerry tweeted a photo of herself in underwear with the caption, quote, F them kids, ride a trans girl. Yeah, I said it. Hashtag birth control, hashtag Roe vs Wade, hashtag abortion rights. This tweet drew a lot of controversy from people who said it was insensitive and that the tweet was in poor taste and some people were confused as to what Kerry actually meant. Kerry later deleted the tweet and then posted a clarification of what she meant saying, quote, To clarify, I said, F them kids, embryos, as in get an abortion by all means. She then continued and said, quote, Here's my thing, y'all. As a woman of colour, a marginalised stat, and oftentimes the butt of a joke in many cis conversations, I find using satire humour to be a relief in ridiculous political climates like this. I fully am pro-choice, but at the moment I'd rather laugh than cry. She followed this up by saying, quote, Sensitivity doesn't necessarily solve problems, but regardless, that post was absolutely never meant to be taken seriously. She then tweeted an apology and this was followed up with a post with a much longer apology. I won't read the full apology, but the main point is that Kerry said, quote, While my post did not mean to express harm to anyone, I understand that it did. I would like to sincerely apologise for making a joke during a situation that affects so many of us and the people we love. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. In today's video we're going to be talking about why Bag of Chips' TV commercial was pulled from the air, backstage tea about RuPaul's outburst on Drag Race UK, and why Trixie Mattel will never return for All Stars. All that and more coming up in today's video. So let's get started. Bag of Chips' ad campaign pulled. Bag of Chips, who appeared on season 1 of Drag Race UK as well as UK vs The World, ran into some controversy this week after an ad campaign she was in received complaints of being inappropriate. Bagger was announced as the creative director for McCain's, which is a British company that is famous for their frozen chips, which are like thick cut french fries. It's assumed Bagger was chosen to be part of the campaign because her name is literally Bagger Chips and the product McCain sells is chips. The ad campaign featured several TV commercials that showed Bagger cooking chips. However, some of the commercials received complaints from viewers who thought that the commercials were inappropriate for children. According to an article by Adweek, in one of the commercials Bagger is making a self-portrait out of food. In the commercial, Bagger says, quote, Now I'm going to show you my lacy bits or do my famous rendition of Mariah, but what I will do is bring a bit of happiness to your midweek meal. She then tops the self-portrait with one of the brand's famous potato smiley faces and then says, quote, It's got to have great big knockers if you're making a Bagger could park a bus in between them. Arms and legs, give yourself a lovely baked bean bonnet. Look familiar? Anything goes with McCain. 
For anyone that doesn't know, the word knockers is a slang term for breasts. In another commercial, Bagger is making a chip sandwich and while she is spreading the butter on the bread, she says, quote, oh, I love a good spreading. The commercial apparently received over 170 complaints and McCain's has since pulled some of the commercials. The issue was talked about a lot on social media, with some users saying that McCain's overreacted. And other users pointed out for hypocrisy that there are lots of other adverts that use suggestive language, such as perfume commercials, but they don't get pulled from the air. Alexis and Coco's Beef with Dragcon UK Please make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for my future videos. Dragcon UK was officially announced in March of this year and will be taking place in January 2023 in London. The lineup of queens includes many Drag Race UK queens as you would expect, as well as queens from many other international franchises including the US, Canada, Holland, Italia, Espana and France among others. However, two people who will apparently not be going to drag on UK are Season 3 and All Stars 1 and 5 contestant Alexis Mateo, and also Season 5 and All Stars 2 contestant Coco Montrese. Alexis tweeted on the 2nd of July saying, quote, Uh, I was really looking forward to hashtag drag on UK, but I didn't get invited. Hashtag F my drag. And Coco replied to this saying, quote, Me either, what a bummer, no invite, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. And many people were surprised by this, including Drag Race UK Season 3 contestant Charitha May, who replied to Alexis's tweet saying, quote, You didn't, question mark, let me speak to Queen Elizabeth, this is outraging. I did a bit of research on DragCon, and it appears that usually the queens have to book and pay for their booth space at DragCon. However, for the case of Dragon UK, some people seem to think that it was invite only, which is why Alexis and Coco were annoyed about not being invited. Some people did suggest that perhaps there was not enough space at the event because the UK and European queens were given priority. However, some people pointed out that other US queens are on the lineup for Dragon UK, such as Jiggly Caliente and Silky Nutmeg Ganache. So, it's not clear whether queens from recent or future series, such as All Stars 7 and international franchises like Drag Race Philippines, were given priority over others. RuPaul's outburst on the set of Drag Race UK Over the years, several queens have spoken out about RuPaul's behaviour on set, including accusations of being rude. Well, Drag Race UK Season 2 contestant, Sister Sister, seemed to make some comments recently on Instagram about RuPaul's behaviour on set during Drag Race UK Season 2. Sister Sister posted on her Instagram stories saying, quote, ask me anything, and invited people to submit questions. One user asked what her favourite behind the scenes moment was, and Sister Sister replied saying, quote, Ru was legit peed before Banana Drama went out, heard her screaming at production for anything, then we skipped out with our bananas like. From what Sister Sister said, she was referring to the infamous moment on Season 2, Episode 5, which was the Ruru Vision Song Contest Challenge. For those of you that don't know, during the episode, the contestants split into two groups and had to write lyrics to and perform their own song for the Rurovision Song Contest, which is a parody of the Eurovision Song Contest. The team called Banana Drama, which Sister Sister was part of, was in the bottom that week and there was an explosive moment where RuPaul shouted at the queens on stage. After being criticised for her performance outfit, one of the queens called Jo Black admitted that her performance dress was from the high street clothing store H&M. RuPaul seemed annoyed by this and then said, quote, That outfit off the rack was a huge disappointment to me. If it is from H&M, you better glitter the F out of it and make it something special. We're looking for Great Britain's next superstar. Don't waste my time. I don't want to see any effing H&M. The moment went viral online at the time, mostly because it seemed slightly out of character for RuPaul, and Ru even later apologised in the episode, making a joke about being in quarantine which might explain her outburst. This rant by RuPaul also started many debates online about how Drag Race may be exclusionary for queens who can't afford custom-made garments. 
For example, fellow season 2 contestant Ginny Lemon, who had been eliminated the episode before, tweeted after the incident saying, quote, Screaming and swearing at desperate out-of-work queens for being too regional and unable to afford costumes after seven months of jobless despair, dot dot dot. Now babes, I'm better off at home, thank you very much. And going back to what Sister Sister said on Instagram, it appears as though Rue was perhaps in a bad mood that day and was already angry before the queens even did their performances. So this is potentially an interesting insight into what happened backstage and why RuPaul's outburst happened that day. Please check out my Patreon where I offer exclusive member benefits such as shoutouts in my videos, chat community and sending one-to-one -one messages with me and also exclusive content. Check out patreon.com slash drag tea served or use the link in the bio to sign up. I hope to see you all there and welcome you to the drag tea served family. Trixie Mattel will never return for All Stars. All Stars 7 is currently airing and this is the first season that is made up of all winners. When the cast for All Stars 7 was originally announced, several previous Drag Race winners talked on social media about whether they had been asked to take part in the season. This included Bianca Del Rio, who joked on Twitter saying that she was, quote, too busy to take part. And according to an article by The List, Bianca said, quote, it just didn't make any sense to me. I didn't feel there was anything I had to prove or go back. She also implied that the format of the show should be changed to keep things fresh. This was in stark contrast to Bob the Drag Queen, who said on her podcast Sibling Rivalry that she was, quote, free as a bird, but just didn't get asked to be on All Stars 7. However, Bob is hosting the pit stop for All Stars 7, so that might be why she wasn't asked to take part. Another previous winner who was recently asked about this was All Stars 3 winner Trixie Mattel. In an interview with Insider, Trixie was asked if she would ever return for All Stars and Trixie said, quote, no, never. Trixie continued and said, quote, they did ask me to come back for All Stars. They said, hey, we're doing all winners. We know you don't want to do it, but we wanted you to know we always think of you if you wanted to do the opportunity. And I said, no, thank you. Trixie is currently a judge on the drag singing competition show Queens of the World, alongside drag race judge Michelle Visage and singer Leona Lewis. Trixie is also hosting her own show called Trixie Motel, which is a show about Trixie renovating a hotel with the help of celebrities. Trixie implied as though she is more comfortable as a judge rather than a contestant, but said she would be open to judging on future seasons of All Stars or doing some kind of collaboration by blending the Drag Race franchise with Trixie Motel. Because guess what? You guys might have a big Twitter following, but I have fans too. And up until now, I have not unleashed my fans on anybody, but you're about to find out exactly how my fans feel about you bullying me. Have a good day. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. You may remember that I did a video several months ago about the drama involving Todrick Hall and it became the most watched video on my channel. So I thought I'd do a follow-up video giving you some more information about the Todrick Hall situation. This includes the fallout from Celebrity Big Brother, his unpaid rent lawsuit, as well as celebrities calling Todrick out for his behaviour. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. The Fallout from Celebrity Big Brother So just to explain quickly for those of you who don't know, Todrick Hall is a singer, choreographer and YouTuber who has appeared several times as a guest judge slash choreographer on Drag Race as well as many other TV shows. In my previous video, I went into detail about the drama involving Todrick, and in particular his time on Celebrity Big Brother. If you haven't watched my previous video, make sure you check that out, I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, as you'll know from my previous video, Todrick appeared on the Celebrity Big Brother in February of 2022. And while on the show, Todrick was widely criticised for the things that he said and did, which I explain in more detail in my previous video. Todrick actually made it to the final two on Celebrity Big Brother, and the winner was decided by the eliminated housemates voting. Todrick only received one vote, and many of the contestants had less than positive things to say about him. So I'm going to choose the less, the lesser of two evils. The one thing that this vote ensures is that I will not ever have to hear your voice again. 
After the Celebrity Big Brother finished, Todrick cancelled all of his after show interviews and people at the time thought that Todrick did that to avoid being confronted with the backlash from fans about his behaviour. However, in an Instagram post from March of 2022, Todrick explained, I haven't avoided press because I'm afraid to comment on my experience on Big Brother, but more to protect myself and my mental health to make sure I could actually get my show on stage and fulfill my obligations to my fans and my paid employees. And just to explain that part where Todrick said paid employees in capital letters, this is a reference to the fact that many people who apparently worked for Todrick as dancers or in other capacities have alleged that Todrick never paid them. This includes Drag Race alum Manila Luzon, who claimed in a Twitter post from October 2019 that Todrick never paid her for a Halloween party that Manila hosted for Todrick. And this issue of not paying his employees has become one of the enduring parts of the Todrick Hall drama. Anyway, later in March of 2022, Todrick did an interview with Entertainment Tonight where he talked about his regrets to do with Celebrity Big Brother. In the interview, Todrick said, quote, I'm happy with the game I played. I wish the personal statements wouldn't have been said. I wish I wouldn't have crossed into a personal level, but I don't regret being on the show and I've learned a lot from it. Todrick went on to explain that he regrets letting the lines between a game and reality becoming blurred. Todrick also said that he actually had a good relationship with many of the Celebrity Big Brother housemates and said that he and fellow finalist Misha Tate, quote, still talk and text every day. And Todrick even said that he, quote, really liked Shanna Mokla. Just to explain, on Celebrity Big Brother, Todrick and Shanna had several fights, including a time when Todrick supposedly repeated something to Shanna that she had told people that a home invader had once said to her, and Todrick was heavily criticised for this. Don't worry, Todrick, I'll get the jury to vote against you. Don't be too hard on me now. You remember immediately. Oh, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh my god, you went there? Like, because she was saying it was like one of, you know, the most painful and like, terrible things. And he came over to my window and tapped on the yeah. glass and said, too hard on me. And going back to the Entertainment Tonight interview, Todrick said that despite what you saw on Celeb TV Brother, he said that he really liked Shanna Mokla and claimed that he actually rooted for her on several occasions, but they just didn't show those bits in the broadcast. Todrick then added that although he takes responsibility for the things he said and did on the show, a lot of context was left out of the edit and he said that, quote, there are certain parts of Shanna and I's situation that are just completely not true. But this was just the start of Todrick's problems and more serious legal issues were yet to come, which I'll explain now. Lawsuit for unpaid rent As I mentioned in my previous video, one of the big dramas that Todrick was involved in is that he posted a video on his YouTube channel in February of 2022 titled Bought My Dream Home Full Tour. The video has since been taken down so I can't show actual clips from it. However, in the video, Todrick gave a tour of his lavish five-bedroom house in California, which he claimed he bought. However, lots of people in the comments claimed that Todrick was in fact renting this house and was lying about buying it. And this appeared to be true because in March of 2022, the apparent owners of the house, Avi and Orna Lavian, sued Todrick because he apparently had not paid the $30,000 per month rent that he agreed to pay. According to an article in the Mail Online from October 2022, in the original lawsuit in March of 2022, the landlords asked the court for $60,000 in rental fees for the months of February and March, in addition to attorney's fees, $1,000 per day in damages, a forfeiture of the rental agreement and, quote, all other relief the court deems just and reasonable. However, according to the article, Todrick has since then been ordered to pay $100,000 in damages plus another $2,000 in attorney's fees and costs. And Todrick was photographed outside the house in October of 2022, so it's assumed that he still lives there, but it is unclear whether he has paid the $100,000 yet or not. And more recently, Todrick was involved in more drama after he was called out by a few celebrities. Stick around to find out what happened. Todrick called out by Laomi. Laomi Maldonado, who is also known as the Wonder Woman of Vogue, is a transgender dancer, instructor, model, activist, and ballroom dancer. She is the founder of the House of Amazon and best known for her voguing. 
She has also appeared as a choreographer and judge on several shows including Pose and Legendary. Back in 2021, Leomi posted an Instagram story with a screenshot of a video from Todrick's TikTok with a caption that said, Dear at Todrick, can you please stop noging in your videos? It comes off as a mockery to voguing, especially because it's being done wrong. Nothing wrong with learning from those knowledgeable. Just to explain, voguing is a highly stylized modern house dance originating in the late 1980s that evolved out of the Harlem ballroom scene of the 1960s. It gained mainstream exposure when it was featured in Madonna's song and video Vogue in 1990, and it was also showcased in the 1990 documentary called Paris is Burning. And according to Leomi, the term noging is referred to any choreographer or dancer who attempts to display voguing with no knowledge of vogue nor training which often comes off like a mockery. And this is what Leomi was accusing Todrick of doing. And it appears that Leomi is still not a fan of Todrick based on a tweet she posted in June of 2022 which said, Someone posted a quote by Todrick Hall and I immediately unfollowed them. I do not need to see that negativity on my timeline. And Leomi is not the only person who has called out Todrick. Todrick drama on TikTok More recently, Todrick had some drama on TikTok when he was called out by Abigail Adams, who is a content creator, podcaster and reporter. The drama started when Abigail posted a video to TikTok in October 2022 where she said that she wishes Big Brother contestants would stop hanging out with Todrick after their seasons because he is quote not a nice person. I really wish Big Brother contestants would stop hanging out with Todrick after their seasons because he is not a nice person. She then went on to call Todrick problematic and listed several things such as the Celebrity Big Brother drama as well as the allegations of not paying his dancers and the unpaid rent lawsuit. Todrick then reposted a clip of Abigail's video on his TikTok and responded to it. Todrick said that he wishes people who don't know him would quote, stop talking bleep about me on the internet. Todrick claimed that Abigail had posted the video to increase her popularity and start a quote, witch hunt against Todrick. Todrick then went through some of the allegations that were mentioned in Abigail's video, such as the things he said to Shanna Mokola on Celebrity Big Brother, and Todrick explained that what he said to Shanna was actually about Shanna's ex-boyfriend and not about the home invader. The comment I said to Shanna was never about a home intruder my house was broken into. I would not make a joke about that. It was about an ex-boyfriend. Still not nice, but not the facts that you're telling people. Then Todrick said that everyone has, quote, skeletons in their closet, and that it's not fair to judge someone based on what you see on a television show. And Todrick finished by saying that although he hadn't, quote, unleashed his fans on anyone up until now, you were about to see how his fans feel about him being bullied because guess what? You guys might have a big Twitter following, but I have fans too. And up until now, I have not unleashed my fans on anybody, but you're about to find out exactly how my fans feel about you bullying me. Have a good day. Todrick also posted this response video to his Instagram with the caption, quote, just posted this on my TikTok. Go check it out and let at it's Abigail Adams know I'm not taking this bull bleep anymore. Daddy's off tour now and taking his narrative back into his own hands. And as you may expect, the response to this situation was split. Many people criticised Todrick and said that he shouldn't have threatened to unleash his fans on Abigail and said that they were, quote, Team Abigail. And then other people defended Todrick, including Drag Race alum Derek Berry, who commented on Todrick's Instagram post saying, I've only had positive experiences each and every time I've been around you. And Todrick also posted on his Instagram stories where it is assumed that he was referring to Abigail, where he said that unless it's your job to hold people accountable, then you shouldn't post about people online. He also said that referring to it as journalism, quote, could be the straw that broke the camel's back. Abigail then posted a response to Todrick's video criticising Todrick's response and threatening to unleash his fans on her. Abigail also said that Todrick had said during an Instagram Live that he wanted to open a dialogue with her, but he had not reached out to her at any point and instead aired all of this publicly. And rather than reach out to me about his personal concerns, he decided to just air it out in front of his million followers. Abigail finished by saying that she was simply reporting things that had been said in the news about Todrick many times before and added that she would be open to having Todrick on her podcast to talk about the situation. Since then, it doesn't look like Abigail has made any other videos about Todrick. 
and Todrick doesn't seem to have made any other comments on the situation. So there you go, there was an update on the Todrick Hall drama situation. Let me know what you think about the Todrick Hall drama in the comments, but please keep it respectful. As I mentioned in my last video, please do not send hate to Todrick or anyone else. This video is for entertainment purposes only, and I'm not taking sides in this situation, I'm just simply reporting on what has happened. No one should ever send hate to any other human being, so let's all keep it nice and friendly please. Hello everyone and welcome back for some more Drag Race gossip, secrets and drama. So because Drag Race UK Season 4 has now finished, I thought I would go through some recent Drag Race UK drama and backstage tea, including Ellie Diamond's Twitter drama, Willem calling out Ahura and Tace, as well as Crystal Versace being accused of stealing makeup ideas. All that and more coming up in today's video, so let's get started. Please note that because we'll be talking about the outcome of certain episodes of Drag Race, a spoiler alert is in place for this video. Ellie Diamond's Twitter Drama Ellie Diamond competed on the second season of Drag Race UK and placed fourth. Ellie recently received some criticism on Twitter, which appeared to be a misunderstanding after something that happened at a live show. Back in November of this year, a Twitter user named Amir tweeted saying, Not a Rue girl walking by the venue at Lady Bushra OG was performing at and doing a thumbs down from outside the window towards her on stage. How very supportive. The fact Bushra said on stage that she'll go online and be all hashtag ally, we screamed. Just to explain, Lady Bushra is a character developed by British comedian Amir. And it appears as though the Twitter user who posted the original tweet might be Amir's husband because they have the same name according to this article in the Manchester Evening News. However, this isn't 100% confirmed. Anyway, although the Twitter user didn't name the Rue girl that they were talking about specifically, Ellie Diamond then responded to the tweet, seemingly admitting it was her. Ellie said, I would like to comment to defend myself and just say I was walking past and heard someone on the mic say drag race and I ran up to the window and booed and put thumbs down towards drag race jokingly. Anyone that knows me knows I joke about drag race like that. The Twitter user then replied to Ellie in several tweets and basically said that what Ellie did was quote appalling and said that it was an unfortunate timing because it happened during a quote momentous occasion for the South Asian community. The Twitter user then went on to advise Ellie to not do that again because it can quote literally break an artist. Ellie replied and said, I walked away saying how stunning you look to my fiance. I'm sorry that this was a misunderstanding and I have messaged Bushra privately. I support and celebrate all drag as all should. Trust me, I'm not that gal. And Ellie also said that she was quote deeply saddened that her joke was misunderstood and that she didn't realise Lady Bushra was on stage. The Twitter user then replied back and said, Thank you for this, Ellie. We're much stronger as a community together, uplifting and supporting, and you're always welcome at a Bushra cabaret. Drag Race UK Season 4 Behind the Scenes Tea So, some of you may know this already, but after every Drag Race UK elimination, the Queens do exit interviews with several media outlets, such as Attitude, hosted by Tia Coffee, and Pop Buzz, hosted by Wyshe Black. And the UK season 4 queen spilled some interesting behind the scenes tea and fun facts, so I thought I'd group all of them together for you here. The first one is about Just May, who was eliminated in episode 1. In her exit interview with Attitude, Just May revealed why she walked into the workroom with her hand in a weird position. Just May said that right before she was about to enter the workroom, someone got some pen ink on her outfit, so she had to try and wash it off. And because her outfit was still damp when she entered the workroom, she had to cover it up by holding her hand in that position. The next fact is about Copper Top, who was eliminated in episode 3. You may remember that earlier in that episode, for the mini challenge, the queens had to vote in the NAFTA awards and nominate their fellow competitors in categories such as Best Hot Mess and Best Scene Stealing Attention Grabbing Camera Hog, amongst others. Copper Top won the category of Best Background Actress in a Non Speaking Role, implying that she was most likely to fade into the background. 
Copper seemed quite annoyed by this, and in her exit interview with Attitude, Copper revealed that she actually refused to vote for that category in the NAFTA Awards. Copper said that the competition is already a, quote, hot box of emotion, and mental health is important. If someone gets this award, it's going to send them to a dark, dark place. Copper then said that refusing to vote for this award backfired because she ended up getting that award and was then eliminated later in that episode. Copper also said that she shouldn't have been in the bottom for that week's challenge, which was the duo design challenge, because Copper apparently sewed all of Cheddar's outfit, as well as her own, and said that they should have been judged in pairs. It has also been implied by some people online that Copper was deliberately put in the bottom against Black Pepper that episode because the producers wanted to get rid of Copper because she was quiet, which is why they decided to break the pairs and judge the queens individually. The next fact is about Sminty Drop, who was eliminated in episode 4. You may remember that Sminty was in the bottom that episode with Baby after their poor performance in the improv challenge. And then later in Untucked, Dakota Schiffer said that Sminty was the worst in the challenge. This look is impeccable, but I think you... It sounds... To you think I'm lip syncing? I think, think you were. The, yeah. I think you were the worst yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, Sminty revealed in her exit interview with Pop Buzz that because she was annoyed at Dakota for saying that she was the worst, when Sminty was packing up her things to go home, she stole Dakota's spirit gum so Dakota couldn't glue down her wigs. For those of you who don't know, spirit gum is an adhesive that is used to glue down wigs and fake beards. And during Dakota's exit interview with Pop Buzz, Dakota reacted to this news and said that other people's spirit gum had also gone missing, so by the end they were all having to borrow Cheddar Gorgeous's spirit gum because she was the only one with some left. And speaking of Dakota Schiffer, that is who the next fact is about. Dakota Schiffer was eliminated in episode 7, which was the makeover challenge. You may remember that when Dakota went back into the workroom, she ran over and picked up a sweater that had her name on it and put it on. She didn't explain it in the episode, so it seemed a bit random why she put it on. But in the interview with Attitude, Dakota revealed that her twin had actually knitted that sweater, and Dakota had planned to wear it as one of the runways. And Dakota said that her twin had spent 12 days knitting that sweater, and had been distracted from writing their college dissertation because of it. And Dakota added that half the reason why she was crying during her elimination was because she was sad that she didn't get the opportunity to wear that sweater that her twin had made for her on the runway, which is why she decided to wear it during her elimination. Willem calls out a horror and taste. Willem competed on season 4 of Drag Race US and also co-hosts the podcast Race Chaser with season 5 and All Stars 2 contestant Alaska. You may remember this, but back when Drag Race UK Season 3 was airing, Willem said on a podcast that she had been informed that Season 3 of Drag Race UK was filmed in just 10 days. But this was debunked by Season 3 contestant River Medway, and Willem responded. However, Willem then clarified in a later episode that what she meant was that some of the episodes were filmed in one day, but not all of them, but the point was the production was more rushed than usual. At the time, Willem didn't confirm where she had heard this information, so some people thought that Willem had made it up. However, in a recent episode of the podcast, Willem confirmed that she had received this information from Drag Race UK Season 2 contestants Ahura and Tace. Except if Ahura tells me, and then sometimes it's a little fictitious. It's when she tells you it's filmed in 10 days, it's not true. <laughs> And taste too. Hey girl, she told me that. She, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and on a similar note, on a different episode of the podcast, Willem said that she had been told that during the taping of season three, RuPaul had told the contestant, Charity Case, that she needed to be more glam and shave her legs. And apparently Charity said while walking off stage that her drag was good enough for Vogue and she didn't need this. And then later on the main stage, RuPaul apparently called Charity Ford and confronted her about what she had said, but they didn't air any of it in the episode. RuPaul told Charity that she wanted to see more glam drag, she wanted to stop seeing her hairy ass, and Charity Case was heard on the mic walking back to Untucked, or the, the back room, saying uh, if it was good enough for Vogue. And then RuPaul, when the girls came back out on stage, said to Charity before she sent anybody home, Charity come forward and she said, you don't, uh, so you think you're better than my show? You don't need this? Say it to my face. 
And they didn't air any of it, obviously. And Willem also implied as though this might be the reason why Charity was eliminated in the next episode. Charity was kept for one more episode. That's what I was told in April when I was told this tea, which was also when I was told that they filmed it in 10 days. However, this tea hasn't been confirmed by anyone else as of yet. Baby is no longer a drag queen. Baby competed on season 4 of Drag Race UK and left the competition in episode 5 saying that they needed to leave to focus on their mental health. Baby later released a statement saying that they had been having quote, aggressive and frequent panic attacks but then when walking into the workroom pretending as though nothing had happened. Baby also did not come back with the rest of the cast for the roast in episode 9 or the finale in episode 10. The day after the finale aired, someone tweeted asking why Baby was not at the finale and Baby replied saying, don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. And then shortly after this in a separate tweet, Baby said, don't refer to me as a drag queen anymore. There was then a string of reply tweets where Baby confirmed that they use they them pronouns but they aren't precious about it. When asked if they had quit drag, Baby said that they would still be performing and said that wearing makeup and a wig doesn't mean that you're doing drag. Baby also said that they have no resentment towards the word drag, but they are a non-binary performer slash creative and therefore think the term drag is not applicable to them. Did Pixie Polite make Jomba's Blonde cry? Pixie Polite competed on Drag Race UK Season 4 and placed 5th. Jombus Blonde also competed on season 4 and placed 3rd slash 4th. Shortly after the finale of season 4 aired, a user posted on Reddit saying that during the crowning event for season 4, there was a Q&A event and Pixie started whispering mean comments about Jombus and eventually made Jombus cry. The rumour then quickly circulated online and Pixie denied the allegations on Twitter, as did several other of her season 4 queens. I asked Pixie about this rumour in my interview with her and Pixie said that the rumour was completely false and showed text messages from Jombas to prove it. It should also be noted that the Reddit thread has since been closed by moderators and the Reddit user deleted their account. Crystal Versace accused of stealing makeup ideas. Crystal Versace competed on season 3 of Drag Race UK and was the winner. During the episode 10 finale of season 4, all the previous UK winners came back for a guest appearance, namely the Vivian, Lawrence Cheney and Crystal Versace. Shortly after the episode aired, Crystal was accused by an artist called Hungry of copying their makeup and not crediting them. Hungry is a Berlin-based artist who is known for doing what they describe as distorted drag. Hungry tweeted a side-by-side -side photo with Crystal saying, when you spill a little ink when you buy it at Versace. Later the same day, Hungry tweeted saying, she barely got two lines in, but then again, it's probably hard to open one's mouth with someone else's face stretched across your own, shrug emoji, send tweet, Siri, send tweet, tweet it, send, send. And this started a big debate in the comment section. Some people agreed with Hungry and said that Crystal had clearly copied Hungry. And other people disagreed and said that Hungry could not claim that Crystal had copied them. And in a tweet which has seemingly been deleted, Crystal responded to Hungry saying, if only you could walk properly, and tagged Hungry. And the video seemed to show Hungry walking a runway. Hungry then posted a thread with several tweets where they basically said that crediting artists is important and does not diminish your own work if you were inspired by someone else. They also said that you should not exploit your own community and they have been fighting for recognition for their whole career. And they ended by saying that crediting an artist helps their work endure and not get forgotten. And since then, it doesn't look like Hungry or Crystal have tweeted any more about the situation. So there you go, there was some recent drama from Drag Race UK. Let me know in the comments what you think about this drama. I'd also like to say a thank you to my Patreon members, including my newest members, Dave and Janae. And if you'd like early access to my videos and to be able to DM me one-on-one, -on -one, sign up to my Patreon and unlock all the member benefits today. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and please make sure you subscribe to my channel to show your support and I hope you'll join me again in future videos. Thank you, bye!